my god name be praised we as a family would like to thank all the assemblies in uae each and every member of the assemblies in uae the families the individuals and every one of you who is present here this morning for praying for us very earnestly and for the great love and the words of comfort which has flowed from your side towards us as a mark of the fellowship that we have in our lord jesus christ we thank you all and we express our gratitude to each one of you who is present here this morning due to the brevity of time let me go into the subject that is been given to me to be handled this morning the subject on hand is separation if i like to connect it to the theme words that we have on hand i would use the two words from it one is the word flee and other one is the word pursue the word flee to me means separation from self and separation from the world and the word pursue to me speaks of being joined to the lord and no separation from him this is the way i would like to connect the subject separation which i have on hand this morning as a text portion i would just like to read two verses from galatians chapter 1 and verse 15 and verse 16 the first part of it i would like to read it in english and you may follow in the language of your preference galatians chapter 1 verse 15 and verse 16 but when it pleased god who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace 16 the first part to reveal his son in me to reveal his son in me the words that we have on hand speaks a great truth to us but before i proceed i would like to define as to what we mean by the term separation i would like to define what we mean by the term separation separation is not isolation but contact without contamination separation is not isolation but contact without contamination when the lord desires us to experience and to practice separation in our life god doesn't desire that we isolate ourselves from the world but rather he desires that we be in the world and rather not be contaminated by the world in our life as we live here but before we proceed, i proceed further i would like to bring to your attention the uh, the sequence in which i would like to explain the subject i have classified this into three categories i classified this into three categories category number 1 with regard to separation what do we believe with regard to separation what do we believe classification number 2 with regard to separation why do we believe what we believe and classification number 3 with regard to separation why do we practice what we practice i like to handle the subject in these three classifications classification number 1 with regard to separation what do we believe what do we believe with regard to separation or in other words with regard to separation what does the word of god say i would just like to present to you this morning two statements of belief that anyone who belongs to the lord jesus christ cannot deny two statements of belief that anyone who belongs to the lord jesus christ cannot deny statement of belief number 1 separation is something that we need not try to attain but it is something that we endeavor to maintain separation is something i repeat 
that we need not try to attain, but it is something that we endeavor to maintain. It is a God-ordained process. He is the one who begins the process of separation in us. He is the one and the only one who begins the process of separation in us. We, on our part, don't do anything. Therefore, Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15, which we read, it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb. It is not my role. It is God's own role. He is the author of separation. We are not the author of separation. He is the author of separation. So the question comes, do I have to do anything for it? No. We don't try to attain separation in our life. We rather, we endeavor to maintain it. Separation and salvation goes together. Separation and salvation goes together. In other words, salvation and separation is inseparable. Is inseparable. We don't have to do anything from our end. The day you are born again, you are separated unto the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not something as we speak often or something that we try to attain in our life. It is God-given. It is God-ordained. It is God is the author and the lone author of it. Statement of belief number one. Separation is something that we do not try to attain, but rather something that we endeavor to maintain. Statement of belief number two. Separation from the world takes place the moment you are joined to the Lord. Separation is something that takes place in your life the moment you are joined to the Lord. That's why Paul says in Corinthians, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Paul again says, do you not know that your bodies is the temple of the living God and that the spirit of God dwells in you, he fellowships in you, he tabernacles in you. The moment you are joined to the Lord, you are separated from the world. And let me point to the truth this morning, is that when you are joined to the Lord, you are joined to the Lord unto eternity. It is not a temporal joining. It is an eternal joining that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are joined unto eternity, which points to the great truth of no separation from God that we find in Romans. That's why Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Let me also join this truth along with it. If our joining to the Lord is unto eternity, then there is no turning back. If our joining to the Lord is unto eternity, then there is no turning back. We sing that song which often is so meaningful, no turning back, no turning back. The joining is unto eternity. Then there is no more compromise with the world. Then there is no more partaking with the world. Then there is no more agreement with the world. Then there is no more friendship with the world. Because we are joined to the Lord unto eternity. Suppression takes place in my life the moment I am joined to the Lord. Two statements of belief. What do we believe with regard to separation? Separation is something that we do not try to attain, but it's something that we rather endeavor to maintain. Statement of belief number two is that separation takes place the moment you are born again and joined to the Lord. That is unto eternity. The second classification. The second class we have to bring. Why do we believe what we believe? Why do we believe what we believe? Please do turn with me to one more verse. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And we'll read verse 26. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26. For such a high priest 
was fitting for us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and has become higher than the heavens what a wonderful high priest such a high priest was fitting for us let me connect this to galatians chapter 1 verse 15 wherein we find the wonderful truth of why salvation and separation in our life paul says in galatians chapter 1 and verse 16 he says to reveal his son in me that is the purpose of separation that is the purpose of salvation isn't it to reveal his son in me that is the purpose of separation and salvation in our life and look at the nature of our lord jesus christ to reveal his son in me who is undefiled who is holy harmless separate from sinners and this morning you ask me the question why do you believe what you believe my answer to is this i believe what i believe because the one in whom i believe he is separate from sinners because the one in whom i believe has himself said that he does not belong to this world i believe what i believe because the one in whom i believe has said that friendship with the world is enmity with god because i believe what i believe because the one in whom i believe has said that you cannot serve two masters it is either the lord it is either the lord or the world we have a wonderful reason to separate why do we believe what we believe because the one in whom i believe is himself separate from sinners he told me that friendship with the world is enmity with god he has told me that you cannot serve two masters he has told me that he doesn't belong to the world therefore i believe what i believe because the one in whom i believe is the one whom i look forward to he is the one who is separate from sinners two classifications are over third classification why do i practice what i practice why do i practice what i practice turn with me to one more verse romans chapter 12 a verse that we all uh, know very well romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2 romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable service and do not be confirmed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god permit me this morning when we go into the original of this text i will like to rephrase and replace two words from the first verse that we read from romans chapter 12 and if i would rephrase and read this verse like this which would be the apt meaning of it i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your manner of life a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable act of worship hope you're with me you present your manner of life holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable act of worship why do i practice what i practice because suppression to me becomes an act of worship suppression to me becomes an act of worship the moment i say no to the world it's an act of worship what a privilege the moment i sacrifice the desires of my flesh it is an act of worship the moment i say no to the pleasures of this world it is an act of worship suppression leads to worship suppression leads to worship 
movement by movement, every believer has got this privilege of worshipping God by practicing suppression in life. That's the reason I practice what I practice. That's the reason we have to practice what we practice. Separation from life is an act of worship. When separation becomes an act of worship, separation no more de becomes demanding, it becomes a delight. Separation no more becomes demanding, it becomes a delight. Separation no more becomes unreasonable, it becomes a reasonable act of worship. Suppression no more becomes burdensome because it becomes a pleasure of my life. It becomes a pleasure of my life because the, he is the one whom I love. I've been joined to him. He is my delight. He is my desire. Whom do I have in heaven but you? Whom do I desire in earth beside you, O oh God? He is my love. He is my first. He is my focus. He is the lover of my soul. Him I love to worship. Him I love to worship. Suppression is something that I practice because it's an act of worship from my side to my God and my Savior. What a wonderful thing. The divine purpose of God is to reveal His Son in me. Two statements of belief. Suppression is something that we do not try to attain. It is something that we try to maintain. Suppression takes place the moment you are joined to the Lord. Why I believe what I believe? Because the one in whom I believe is himself separate from sinners. He has said that he does not belong to the world. He has told me that the friendship with the world is enmity with God. It's a wonderful thing for us to do it. Suppression I practice because it's an act of worship from our side. My dear God, send me praised. And I would love to say this again to you again, that he who rejects this does not reject men but God. He who rejects this does not reject men but God. May God send me praise before we conclude.